All right. Homework four, WordPress mimicry. Any questions or anything? Then um, there is this particular font which I am not able to use. Like default fonts are already available. Special font for the WordPress thing, they are not there. So I have to import them. Let's look at one. So what's your, what's the WordPress site? 32, spelled out. Yeah, yeah. No, what's the address? Here, come on over to that bit. Do we have to be exact in the fonts and everything? Like, any buttons? Let's look at a few examples and see. This one, it's a Okay, and then what's, so where are you trying to do it then? What's your number? What is it called, my WordPress? HTML? All right, so you're looking at this font here. Let's look at it. Okay, so where is the font? Font family inherit. Let's do... Here we go. Cherry Swash. That's the that's the font. So if you put that in yours, it doesn't Okay, so then we should go on the H1 tag. Is that where it is? Sure, let's try that. So what does it say? It says font not found or something? You have to import that particular font. Well, where is it coming from over here? It's in the CSS. In the CSS. So you could link that CSS? I mean, if you want to match it exactly, what CSS file is it in? Do you know? I guess it, there's a bunch of them listed here.
I'm not going to figure that out right now. I guess, I mean, you'd have to find what file it's in, and then maybe you could link, right? So they're linking some file that has the font, and you could do that. What's your question, Abdul? Um, do we have to be, because my phone has a button, menu button, and then it goes to the search. What number? I mean, I, it's not done yet. I haven't put any buttons in anything. I'm, I'm just, because my template has those buttons. What's the WordPress site? It's, about swift1.wordpress.com. About swift1. One. A one as in just one. That's also JavaScript. So just what it looks like, right like this. You could have a button there that doesn't do anything. And if you, so if you look at the source right now, if you inspect element, and then if you look at it like this, it may be different because the JavaScript changes the HTML. But you should be able to get a header that that's like this with yes, something that looks like that, something that's over on the side, and yeah. Some of them are kind of weird, so you have to decide at some point you might decide um, what they did was really strange. I'm just going to do it slightly differently, but with the same kind of same kind of feel. So for this template, are we able to um, are we allowed to put pictures in it or something like that? Sure, you can add things to it if just you want. Yeah. yeah, I mean the idea is okay. Here's the basic thing is they have a post and there's something where the post is, there's a title, there's some links over on the side, and there's this kind of like cute thing. So that's that's the part you would want to mimic. Oh. Anybody else have one you want to look at? Okay. Uh, when do you want me to look at this? Basically, okay, so you want some you want some guidance on grading as well, right? So how am I going to grade this? How many points? Did we say how many points this is supposed to be? So let's call it a 10-point homework. And then if it's not a 10-point homework, we'll scale what I'm talking about here. So... Um, you just saved, clearly just saved the, the HTML, CSS, and didn't do anything else. So should that be worth anything? Is anybody going to admit that that's what you want to do? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's say that's worth zero. Uh, so don't, don't just do that. Um, Let's see. Let's just make something up as guidance. I really won't know until I look at them all, but I don't really want to look at them all until I'm actually going to put a grade in because it'll take a lot of time. All right. So a perfect score would be like everything looks just the same. HTML, CSS is nice and easy to read. Right, I'll look at your source, and if it looks like their source, then that's not good. 
right? You don't want it to look like, I don't know, it's kind of messy, there's lots of rules, you probably don't need that many rules. All right, so 8 out of 10, um, let's say you also include an about section at the bottom where you describe anything you had trouble with or decided not to implement and why. All right, so like this one, you could say include in your about list this font, I didn't find the font. Or um, don't even mention JavaScript because nobody's needing to do that. You can do that if you want to, but I'm not going to look at it. Um, or if maybe you couldn't, you couldn't get this to line up just right, so you can say it doesn't quite line up. I didn't figure it out. I don't know. Or if you um, if you don't like something that they did and you wanted to change it slightly, you could say that too. All right. So so six out of ten would be like it's a start. Some parts look right, and many others don't. I don't know. I'm thinking of like at least half of the page looks okay-ish. So like you, you started on it, and maybe in terms of like this one here, maybe you just have this part looking, but then the bottom's not, or something like that. Or you have the basic um, tag structure, but then... Um, only a few of them have the right kind of formatting. So you, you have the basic tag structure. This is a, maybe an H1. This is um, maybe a paragraph with a certain class. This is another paragraph with a certain class. This is all in a div. This isn't a div. This here up here is a div. Maybe this is a list. So you have all that laid out, but you don't have many of the styles. So it doesn't look quite right, but the structure of the HTML is good. So that's your that's a start. And then you're playing with the styles, and it's just how far did you get with making them look right. And if you have a good reason for not doing some style that they did, because it's just weird the way they styled it, then say that, and I may say that's fine. So the search bar is also JavaScript? Where it is is not JavaScript. So the search there is probably PHP. You probably guess your PHP page. But so you don't have to implement that. You just want to have the layout. This is practice in layouts. Other questions about this? Okay, so then we'll decide this is what we'll do. Um, I'll be perfectly happy if I don't have to look at it until after next class. How's that? Do Tuesday night. And if you have a question about yours, send me a link to your WordPress site and your CS site. Okay, so you can, and, and what in particular you're asking about. Right, so can you look at my WordPress? This is the link to the WordPress, this is the link to my site. And I'm having trouble with the font. Is it okay? That way, I, and what am I going to do? I'll look at it, and I'll either say I don't want to spend time answering your question. It's fine. The way you did it, or I'll look at it for a few minutes and see if I can figure something out. All right.
So that's that. Let's move on to PHP then. We are in PHP land. So you should go through all this stuff and I'll just find things as I don't remember them. We'll start from scratch with some, some example. Okay, so our empty PHP file, doc type HTML, is that it? Some PHP examples. The login, it's just some text file. What was it? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Okay, no, that's not. It's nothing to do with us. It's a it's a Unix thing. Okay, so let's say that we want to do. Uh, so I'll say step seventeen. We'll just do it like this for now. Some examples of HTML. Okay, so what are our tags that we know? Strong, EM, pre, code, P, Q is an inline quote, so block, block things are like P and block quote, inline things are like those or something. We have headings h1, h2, h3. Those are also block tags. Sure. An a tag. Uh, let's not do that one for now. Okay, so let's do it like this. So. Okay, so I'd like to say something like, for each one of these, display some HTML like that. Okay, so for something like myver, let's see, let's, we want to make an array of strings like this. In C, you would do some strings equals, you'd have these like this, and you could have a list of strings, some strings, and then you'd have to say bracket however many you're going to have. You do that kind of thing. Okay, but what do we do over here? Here is one way to make an array, so we'll do that. Array, and then we have this. I'm going to do single quotes if I'm allowed to because it's less typing. Make sure to use your semicolons. And then there's a, so here's one way to do a for loop. You have an array. You start with a counter at zero. You go with a counter less than however many things are in the array. You go plus plus. You do it just like in C. I guess we'll start with that because that's what they have. And count would be one of those functions that you would want to remember, put on your list. Okay, so then we could do print I'm not sure if this is going to work. Probably not, but we'll try it first.
Why does it want to do that? I don't know. Maybe I have a mistake somewhere. Yikes. Okay. Yeah, let me go over here. What does that mean? Line 12. Doesn't like my what? Oh, I have to start my variable with a dollar sign. Maybe that's it. Okay, and it didn't it didn't work um, like I wanted, so I want to do. All right, let's see. So if you look at the output, it doesn't look like what I would expect. So what I'm trying to do is you have, um, for each one of these strings here, you're going to have the tag. For each one of these tags, you have the tag, and then whatever, and then the tag. And then maybe we'll put those into the paragraphs. So they would be nicely spaced out. So you would expect to see a bunch of those, but I'm only seeing one, and then what is the PHP? If you look at, run it on the server, we get an H1 tag, and then that keep forgetting the dollar signs remember the dollar signs that looks like what it's supposed to right the output there let's do it like this so some text with tag tag let's try this and see if it works Okay, so that even works. Isn't that exciting? Um, we could put some... <coughs> the example in the slides did headers. I don't know. The, so there's the quote. Isn't that exciting? Sort of. Okay, so let's do a checkerboard. What would our basic structure be for drawing a checkerboard? Let's say we're going to draw it with buttons. So I want to have 8 by 8 buttons. Where 
where they maybe alternate black and white or something like that. So what would the code be if you were going to just do HTML? There's a input and you can put it inside of a form if you want. You can also not put it inside of a form if you just want to show a button. So we could have um, input type equals button. Uh, name equals N or something, I don't know. Checkers. Value equals some spaces, maybe. So there's a button. We could control how big it is with CSS would probably be the right way. Class equal checkers. Does anybody know? Hmm? Is that it? Link? What is the... Try it and see. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> so it's there with and height, but it's not actually using it. All right, to be determined. Somebody can figure that out while I'm doing other things, maybe. All right, so that would be one of them, and what if we want to do, so if we want to do eight of them, we put it in a for loop. Uh, I could do eight, but I'll make it configurable, so I'll say board width equals eight. And so there's choices to make when you need to do something like this. And they claim that the right thing to do is something like this. Something like this. So how does it process this? Um, remember, when you ask for a PHP file, server comes, so client says, give me the file. Server says, this is the file, let me run the PHP first before I send it back. Right? You, have, you have your server, you have your client, client says, get file, dot PHP, server runs the PHP. PHP generates HTML and then sends the HTML back. All right, so we get to this point in the file. We run this stuff. Anything that's printed is saved to send back to the client. Right here, this is running. And we stop the PHP. So this ends the PHP tag. And we have just HTML here in between. So what it's doing is it's in the middle of a for loop here, and it's still sort of running that for loop 
while this happens. And then, so it'll, it's in the middle of the for loop. This is sitting there in the regular HTML part, so that's gets as part of the file. And then this is the end of the for loop here inside the PHP. And so it's back in PHP land, it'll go back up here. So we can do this kind of thing, I think. There's eight buttons. All right, if we want to have eight by eight, then we add another nested for loop. Call it J, and then we need another one of these. I'm not sure. Emacs is kind of confused with the spacing here. J plus plus would be good, and also J less than board width. Uh, okay, so we also want to do, let's see, after the innermost for loop, we want to break, and I'll just do Um, okay, if we want to style these so that they alternate, so they're like checkers, probably also want to give them a different name. Each one should get its own name, so we'll do So each of these has their own name now. Maybe I'll put another underscore. So this is my, I'm in PHP here. I'm back in HTML, HTML mode here, but anywhere in the middle of your HTML mode, you could have one of these, which outputs this string, the, the column and the row. So they all have different names. All right. Um, what if I want them to be some black and some white? So one thing that you can do is you could have one kind of style that can be used by multiple different elements. This is a thing that you'll see a lot, so we'll do it like that too. So if I put in here checkers white, they'll be white. If I put in checkers black, they should be black. They should be black. Oh, color, yeah. That's a class, not a tag. Maybe, all right. So that says apply to any class. I could also put it on text or something like that. If I wanted to do text, I don't have to define a separate class just for doing black or white text or whatever. All right, so then 
inside of here, I should choose the class based on where I am in the grid, i plus j mod 2. So let me put it here. I'll say if i plus j mod 2 is 0, color class equals color black, say, else color class. So I can, I don't want to put the if statement in, in the middle of the input tag, that would be ugly. So I'll do it like this. Now they're all wrong. Good. Color class. Dollar sign. It's been a long time since I did the dollar signs. Isn't that beautiful? If you wanted to, let's see, if we wanted to get rid of the space in between, C, right. There's a border, that's probably fine. There's a padding that we probably want to get rid of. Just zero is fine. There's a margin as well. Is the border white? No. The border is black, that's all right. All right, something else to be determined. Pay no attention to that. All right, so these are both examples where you're um, you're doing PHP just as convenience, right? There's no interaction with the server. It's just convenient that we don't have to write the code to do this. So probably what you would do if you were going to do this was um, you would generate this. You, like this would be the file that you have and you would generate an HTML file out of it and then you would give that link, right? <coughs> so why wouldn't you just want to give this as a link to your checkers page? Why wouldn't you want PHP to be running instead of, so what's, if the client's going to a PHP versus HTML, what's the difference? There's any problem with PHP. Right, I mean, if there's a wrong, let's just assume that the PHP is OK then. It has to go to the server and receive the action. So either way, if you're getting a PHP or HTML, the same sort of size file is going to come back. Right? So in terms of your network bandwidth, if you're a server, that's the same. The difference is you're, if you're doing a PHP file that's using your CPU. So if you look at WordPress, so WordPress sites, we had one open here. So WordPress sites are, this is a, so that's your fake, fake WordPress. Um, so WordPress runs a PHP in the back. So all these configuration options and stuff that you have in the, in the configuration of your WordPress site, ultimately those are saved as some variables on the server, and then there's PHP code that goes and, and, and 
and uh, output the HTML? Um, that can be expensive. So this is a common problem that WordPress sites are kind of slow. So what do they do then? What can you do if you don't want the PHP slowing down your server? Caching. Just what I was talking about. So if there's, this is going to run and it doesn't, it doesn't ever change, right? I'm not going to change my PHP file, so it's always going to output the same kind of board. So I should generate the HTML with the PHP and then send that. So if you're in WordPress and there's options about caching, what it's going to do is it's going to generate the pages like once per day or something like that and just send those. And only every once in a while it runs the PHP to generate the new style. All right. Let's see. Another example. Or let's... All right. We had our list of examples and we just did one. Let's pause. You can ask about something or I'll just keep going. What is the difference between both of the formats? The other one Discuss. So pause and see if you want to say anything to your neighbor or something. Yeah. What is the difference between this one and that one? Because we need to wrap the same time between the start and end of the process and the other one is just created as a print statement or an image only. Oh, up in the top one? Yes. It's doing the same thing. I mean, this is equivalent to, this is, so the way you think about this, this is equivalent to if you just had, not, so if you left it open and you had a print, it's the same thing. So there's no significant difference? There's no difference in what gets output, it's just how it looks. So if I'm going to put a print statement on this, I have to escape these quotes. And any time there's a, if there's a backslash in there, I'd have to escape that as well. Can't you concatenate them with the word? You can, right, and then you get this kind of ugly stuff that looks yeah, like yeah, all yeah. these effects. Right, yeah, so that's that's the only thing, it's just which one's easier to read and less likely to have a mistake. Generally, the first thing that you would type is bad style. That's normally true across the board, right? You start typing, you don't make functions, you know, whatever. So, same thing here, we had to make an extra variable so that I can't click this. Yes. Actually, we can separate both the HTML and the server side code, right? Yeah. If we Somewhere. write them. Yeah. All right. Questions? So if you wanted to the so if you wanted to generate this file once, you would do something like PHP September seventeenth.php and then greater than September seventeenth.html. That we run the PHP, generate the output, and then save it into an HTML file. And then if I look at that, it should look the same. All right, next example. Anybody have a favorite? What if you wanted to make this into a checkers game?
we could. There's more stuff to put in then. Uh, okay, there's the setup. They're all on white, and white starts. Well, now there's two different. Which one is correct? This probably doesn't matter. It looks like white, so we should do. Okay, so they're all on white. Let's see if we want to put. Okay, I want to put in the value, the player that's there. So right now the value is just spaces. Nothing's showing for the button text. I'll put... Those. Okay, so if the if it's going to be white, then there's a chance that we should put a piece there. Otherwise, we'll leave it like that. All right. So what? First three rows are one. Less than three value equals a black. If it's greater than or equal to board width minus three, red. And then put that into the value. Oh, HTML file is not going to change. Okay, so. That's a little interesting. <laughs> That's so I have my rows and columns switched. Yes. All right, and if you want these to look bigger and more impressive, you can change the font size, change the color as well, I guess. You could do you could add a class for the color of the piece. All right, if we wanted this to be a game, then they would click here and then what they would click here or something like that. That would be one way to do it. So you'd have to take two different, you could do that, or you could have, um, we could have some text boxes that says where the piece should move, and then they click, and it moves there. I don't know, but then if it's going to move, we have to keep track of, we're not just going to generate this every time. We would generate the initial layout, and later on we would, We'd have this thing where the first time we load it, we do one thing, we treat it like this. The second time we load it, then we would eventually like it. I don't know.
would do that. Let's switch to another example. Then we have to do drag and drop events, and that's JavaScript. You could have a PHP do a click and then another click. And the way that would look is you have a form, and it clicks, and the server would have to keep track of, did they already click? So in the server, in the PHP code, you, you keep track of whether they clicked or not once, whether it's a first click or a second click. But then you'd also have to do this separately, potentially, for each client. Right. So if you're doing, if JavaScript is going to run on the client, it'll just be specific to that client. If, if it's a PHP and the two different people that load this page, if we want to distinguish between them, we'll have to do something else. All right, that's for later. Let us say this is done. The checkerboard is done. Multiplication table, I'll say, you do it. It's like the checkerboard, but simpler. Because you just output, well, I don't know. You're going to output uh, some rows and columns as well. Uh, what else? Let's go over to there, take some notes on things that you should remember. Put this on its own new page. <coughs> okay, so we use the count function. These ones here, they're showing that you can use an array like a stack or a queue. I don't care about that right now. <coughs> this is the other way to do a for loop. So you can remember the for each. Even if you're not going to use it like that, you'll see other people doing it. So I'll put that here. So if we wanted to change our code, then you have an array, and then you have your like i here. So this one. In for each version would be like this, for each. Which order is it? Some strings as tag. So you do that instead of these two lines. So it's slightly, slightly shorter potentially, depending on what you're going to do. All right, other things. Type, Boolean, math operators. Those are just what you would expect. I guess the ones you're most likely to use are pow, maybe, I don't know, min, max. Min max, pow, I don't know. And the constants, I don't know. Maybe it's worth. What was it? M underscore. I don't know that you're going to use the lateral log of 2 that much. Round you might use. I like that. Null is a thing. Fine. Uh, this is where they're talking about they don't want us to do this because it starts to look kind of ugly with all the backslashes. If you put print statements for your HTML rather than the way we did it. 
already done this. Let's see, that was, was that this one? Yeah, there's lots of stuff there. Yeah, that's the one we were just in. Uh, functions, right. Making functions, calling functions. Uh, all right, let's let's stop here and we'll continue with that next time. You want to PHP practice something to practice with PHP, so we should do that. That way, when you get frustrated with your WordPress site, you have something else to do. Let's call it, I don't know, a week. What's a week? 24. Uh, no, we call it 10. And All right, let's say you're going to make a form. Let's see, copy, paste, September 17th.php into your malt table.php. Get rid of the stuff except for checkers. Modify the checkers stuff so it prints a multiplication table from you know, r equals 0 to 8, and column equals 0 to 8. So you'll get something that looks like 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, and then it's just whatever the multiplied values are. Like that? Okay, so the inner part of the loop, instead of Outputting an input tag, a button, instead of outputting that, you output an answer. Okay, that's so that's the first one, and we'll say that's going to be, let's just say, five points and four points if you do that. Full five credit points is to add a text box that they can type into and type some value. And it goes up to that instead of eight. So they can make the table bigger or smaller. So you have to add a text, an input with text and an input with a button for submit. Okay, let's give you another one. Something else. DVD get decided next time. All right, if you have suggestions about things that you want to try, we can put it in there. All right, we'll come up with some other uh, problem for you to work on next time. Questions, comments? The end. All right. If you have something else you want me to.